Hello YouTube, it is time to continue my How to Level X Mastery series. Um, this time I'm gonna feature the Nightblade Mastery. Here we have the Nightblade Mastery. Um, this video is gonna focus primarily on dual wielding Nightblades. And for that you have usually three different damage types that you can go for. Uh, the main damage types being Cold, Acid and Pierce. Okay, so first of all let's take a look at the first 20 levels of a dual wield Nightblade. Because the first 20 levels, um, it kind of doesn't matter which damage type you're going for, because like that early on in the game doesn't really matter at all which damage type you're dealing, kinda. So yeah, let's take a look at the first 20 levels, which you should always do as like any kind of dual wielding nightblade. So first of all, obviously, you will have one point here, right? Then you will have ABB, and Russell's Blade Burst, as well, kind of your first ability that you can also use like um, as your left mouse button or right mouse button, right? It's not really like a, a default attack re replacer, but whenever this is on cooldown, you will use like flat, um, I mean, your normal default attacks anyways, so you can just put this on like your left slash right mouse, bu right mouse button anyways. Then also you would want to have like a point in dual blades, obviously, to be able to dual wield in the first place, right? Um, now level two. Um, you kind of just want to push this to 15 points, because 15 mastery points is where you get the juicy stuff like Knight's Shell and uh, Lethal Assault, right? So, um, what you can do is, well, you just push 3 points here, right? On the next level, you push like 1 point here, and then you, you can take like, um, in Pronotic Burst, you can take like 2 points, because as you can see, like, each of the first 2 points gives you like 2% total speed, which means attack speed, movement speed, and casting speed. So this is going to be like your level 4 basically, right? And um, yeah, then we're just going to push further up to 15 basically. Um, this will be a little bit slow going early on, but um, yeah, it will be better later. So And also like if you would like to have some more, a little bit more single target damage early on, you can like put some more points in dual blades, but I don't really recommend it. Um, like, you can do it, but you don't have to. And if you do, then just like maybe one or two points, right? Anyways, level 5 would usually be like this, right? Just three points here. Um, now on level 6, you use like two points here and one point into Shadow Strike to be able to move around faster. And yeah, that's like another single target damage on top. Um, now on level 6, I mean level 7, right, you just push further here, and um, level 8 is where the like, juicy stuff uh, starts to happen, right, you will get Knight's Chill and Lethal Assault. Now since we have like 2 points here, right, you're just gonna put 1 point here on level 8 first. And uh, now on level 9, you wanna start getting way of like Knight's Chill here. So level 9 would be something like this. Level 10 would be like this, level 11, and then level 12, right? Like this. And then you just proceed maxing out Lethal Assault, so level uh, 13, right? 14, 15, and so like on level 15, you put like one point here, you can put like one point here. Oh no, you actually should like put one point here probably to have like a uh, less cooldown on your healer, right? And then maybe like one point into Phosphatism Armor, like pretty nice one pointer for leveling. And yeah, now you're like level 16, right? 15, 16. And um, what can I do now? Should probably get like at least one pointers into the um, weapon pool skills here. And you can like put some more points in dual blades if you want to, you can like um, no matter like how many points you put here, you should always try to have this at a, like an uneven point, like uneven amount of points. So let's say we had like 16 like this, right, and then we have um, 17 like this, for example. And now we have 18, where we can like either put some points here and here, and I don't know, let's say we want like more here and then like one point here two more here one point here two more here here and uh more here one point and now we're like level 20 right level 20 or 21 
And like this, you have lots of single target damage from Lethal Assault and Dual Blades. You have lots of AoE from Night's Chill. You have some decent uh, heal and movement speed from Pneumatic Burst. You have a uh, movement ability, Shadow Strike, which like ports you around. I mean, you have some additional armor and pierce resistance. That's like, and some energy absorption from enemy spells as well, actually. So yeah, these would probably be like the first 20 levels of basically any Nightblade. Now let's say you want to level a Pierce character, right? So for a Pierce character, you would probably always want to have like dual blades maxed out as high as possible. And uh, you just want to like push here, uh, get like Ring of Steel. You want to get like one point in Anatomy of Murder at least, Murder at least. And then just push here, get, like a one point in Rearding Death. And uh, yeah, just... You kind of get like a one point in Blade Barrier if you would like to have a, well, a panic button, right? You just push, 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 push. This one is pretty much useless for you if you're going for Pierce. Elemental Awakening um, it's not great for Pierce either, but at least you got some Elemental Resistance, right? So feel free to put like as many points here as you would like for Elemental Resistance. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically you just push all the way here and then you get Execution to 5 out of 8 because Execution is like the strongest uh, weapon pool skill. And uh, you want to have this at 20% chance to be used, so yeah, 5 out of 8 is like the sweet spot for that. And you also want at least one point in the Circle of Slaughter. You should get this once you're at 40, just for the fumble, right? And um, that would probably be it for now, and then you start like going over to the other mastery, uh, either Inquisitor or Soldier, right? Um, what you can also do is you can put some more points into Weight of Shadow, right? But just to have like bigger AoE and also to like reduce enemy OA would be like okay to soft cap those once you're like at 50 here, probably. Um, but before that, it's not really like you can put this to say 3 or 4 a little bit earlier as well. But you don't really have to. Because you're gonna be like melee anyways, and everything that's gonna die from AoE is gonna be like around you anyway. Now there's one skill I kinda almost forgot about, and you should probably always one point on any night blade. It's the blade spirit. Always have one point here. That's really good for proccing devotions, like you can bind, for example, rumor to this or like whatever late game option you have. Done there are like two of them and they just circle around you all the time and hit the enemies all the time so they have like a pretty high chance of proc devotions it's really good for that on like any type of build now when it comes to the pierce devotions um you always want to include the assassin's mark right because that's like your resistance reduction devotion in this case so um you should probably later on put this on like blade spirit um, for example, well, you just want to have like this active like all the time, basically, and Blade Spirit makes kind of makes sure that this is active all the time. Um, other devotion that you can also go for as a Pierce build are obviously Azraka and the Unknown Soldier. That's also really important, and uh, also the Uzat. That's pretty nice here. Such as also Obelisk of Men here is really good defensively. Solemn Watcher, good defensively. Mantas is pretty good. Ghoul is pretty good. Um, Alderaan, no, I wouldn't take Alderaan anymore for Pierce build. That's pretty bad now for Pierce. It's like, okay, like better for physical than before, but for Pierce, no. Um, you have these two tier 3 anyway, like Unknown Soldier and Sif Shifting Sands, like Azraka. These two are really, really good. If you wanna like take a closer look on my Pierce Endgame Devotions I was using on my Blade Master, for example, a link for that will be down below. Oh yeah, other like tier 2 devotions that you always wanna have if you have a sword is like Blades of the Dawn, right? Assassin is also pretty good, and Bard's Harp is also worth to consider. Um, yeah, for secondaries, then you should go for either Inquisitor or, or Soldier if you're going for Pierce, right? So for Pierce, Inquisitor, you, um, so the things that you want to get are 
um, for renewal, right? It's like another heal, also more movement speed. You want to have like deadly aim, at least like a one point revival leveling. You soft cap these later, kind of hard cap this actually later. And I mean, you just get the stats here, get a point in vigor, or like more points into vigor if you need more HP. But you should like get more than enough edge, uh, points, like health, just from putting points into the mastery bar here, right? And um, since here I mean a melee build, Inquisitor Seed is gonna be really good. Yeah, since you're gonna be a melee build, Inquisitor Seed is also gonna be very good. That's what I wanted to say there. The thing is, Inquisitor Seed is only like really, really good once you have like many points to spare to get this. So usually I actually try to get Aura of Conviction first and then go for Inquisitor Seal. Um, you can also get like a point into the uh, Seed Resolve here while leveling. And if you need like Aether and Chaos Resistance more badly, then put some more points here before you proceed to your exclusive skill run. But you just kind of want to like get to Aura of Conviction as fast as possible and just max this one out. Because not only does it give you flat piercing damage, it also gives you uh, offensive ability and physical resistance reduction. Now if you're lacking damage while leveling, you can also like put some points into Word of Pain, and especially into Death Sentence, right? Um, you should definitely get this after you got Aura of Conviction. And if you have like kind of huge damage issues already, um, you maybe get this already once you're like at 25 points. But I feel like resistance reduction is more valuable a little bit later into the game compared to early into the game. So I would probably just one point these rush for Aura of Conviction first to get the flat damage, which is like also really, really nice for um, leveling. And then after that, you get uh, the Word of Pain and Death Sentence here. And feel free to also like put some more points here because these actually like increase the area of effect and like the duration of the skill itself. Um, I believe this will get changed on the next patch. I believe Word of Pain will get like a default 8 seconds duration on the next patch. I'm not quite sure on that. I've just read some posts at Zentai, uh, like some spoilery posts by Zentai, but that is still subject to change. But yeah, Word of Pain might have a way longer duration on the next patch. And because of that, you probably don't have to like invest more than one point anymore into this or this node whenever you just want to use it for resistance reduction, like from death sentences, resistance reduction, right? And after this, also, you should max out the Inquisitor Seal and the Arcane Empowerment. Just, just max out both of these. Like, this one gives you insane absorption. This is the more important part. This is not as important, but it's still really, really good. Gives you lots of pierce damage, like flat pierce damage, flat elemental damage, and if you have like some elemental to pierce conversion, you will convert this flat elemental to flat pierce as well. And also like all damage and crit damage, so this is really strong as well for pierce builds. Uh, the null field, I mean, you don't really need casting speed as a like dual wield null blade, right? So you can also use this to have like an additional 25% chance to avoid projectiles, which works kind of nice with uh, Shadow's Dance here which uh, you should have soft capped at least later on as well. I feel like 20% chance to avoid projectiles here, 25% here, so yeah, pretty, almost 50% chance to dodge projectiles, right? Um, also later on, like after you got all of this stuff, you should at least put Nomadic Burst up to 6 points or 10. These are like the sweet spots for total speed. Um, and also, if you need more HP, Get Vigor up to like as high as you can get, or like get a further renewal up to at least soft cap, or like even higher, usually to high a hard cap to get more DA. Um, but yeah, you will have or like you will need more plus one all skill for that to be able to do that, which you hopefully will later on. Like there are some items that are rather easy to get. I will um, talk about those later though. Now another class that you can pair with your Pierce Knight Blade would be the Soldier. The Blade Master is also a really strong Pierce Knight Blade. And you probably would like to have Cadence as your default attack replacer here. At least before you have like the full Burgothian set, right? But then again it's also kinda hard to find like the points to max out Cadence. 
because there are like other more important things you can like or like you should take care of first such as getting like a one pointer in markovian's advantage at least and also maxing out these or like maxing out some of these um passives here like military conditioning is really really strong for hp and physique uh, field command is really really strong for oa and da should always be hard capped should always be soft capped to 10 uh, squad tactics should always be soft capped to 12 War cry should always be soft capped to 12. Oleron's Rage should also always be soft capped to 12 out of 12. Um, Break Morale can be one pointed. Thank Pierce. Um, yeah, like this is only worth it to put more than one point in if you're playing a physical build, right? Um, for all other non physical builds, you just put one pointer here to like disrupt enemy spellcasting. You can put points in the build. Let's. Like a one point here, one point there, if you would like to have more movement abilities. Uh, otherwise, you should not use this. Keep in mind that you cannot use many as well with a dual wield character. This is for shields and two handed melee weapons only. And yeah, like you always already see, like we are kinda short on points, so. Because you also like usually want to like put more points into Shadow Dance. They have the soft cap here as well. Maybe some more points into Anatomy or Phantasmal Armor. So it's kind of hard to, well, make this work, but what you could do later on, if you're playing like a Pierce um, not Blade Master, right, you can get rid of um, Lethal Assault actually, and just go for like Cadence, right? But the thing with Cadence is, if you go for Cadence, you always want both Cadence and Deadly Momentum maxed out. Deadly Momentum is probably even more important, and have like one pointer here only, because that's only like really useful for range builds. So yeah, you always have to like have at least, what is this, 28 points for Cadence, 29 points for Cadence. And um, that's kind of point intensive, so ideally, we all either have like lots of plus one all skills, or you have like the Belgothian set later on, right? Overall, not only when it comes to Pierce, but in general, I would say that I like the Infiltrator, which is like the Inquisitor and Nightblade, more than the Soldier and Nightblade, because it's a little bit more flexible, you can play... Soldier Nightblade, um, mostly Pierce. You can also play it cold, but it's significantly worse than Infiltrator for cold. And for Pierce, it's like about even, but as I said, it's le less flexible than Infiltrator, and Infiltrator can be played as yeah, cold and Pierce. You could also play Blade Master as a physical build, but that's a little bit harder to gear, in my opinion, and I still sh would say that Infiltrator is more flexible than Blade Master. Alright, so here we are at our like level 20-ish Nightblade. And if you wanna go for poison damage, right, you wanna have Nidala's hidden hand here because this modifies your weapon pool skills and gives them more acid poison damage and it also converts some of the peers to acid. Um do note that this does not add acid to like all default attacks, it only adds like it only modifies Bergothian cheaters and Marissa's quick cut and whirling death. So only this this um this weapon pool skill. Keep that in mind, just to like, make sure to read the tooltips properly here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get these, obviously, and then push further here. And get like a one pointer in Anatomy of Murder, a one pointer in Ring of Steel. Like a really good one pointer here. Get one pointers in Burning Death, as well as we need Dallas Justify Bland, right? Because we are using Acid Poison, that's pretty good. And now, the thing is, even though this like modifies these and we should probably put more points here, you kinda still wanna go for execution first. And while you go make your way all the way over here, you also want like a one pointer in, in Elemental Awakening and a one pointer in Merciless Repertoire. And you want this to be maxed out later, but like later, later. And Elemental Awakening, you only put more points in one here if you really want to like. Like, if you need this for the elemental resistance, right? So, yeah, we also put a 1 pointer in Circle of Slaughter here, and then we put 5 points into Execution to have this at its maximum chance of usage, which is 20%. Now, if you have like some cold to acid conversion, you can also use Nightfall. Um, well, if you don't, then this is kind of useless. Um, but now you can like put some more points into like Dual Blades to like 15 to have like an uneven point here. And you can modify Burning Death, like up to 5 out of 8. Burning Death is probably the best out of these three, 
um, weapon pool skills, and you can also like put some more points into Nidalas in hand or uh, Merciless at Repertoire now. And also, don't forget to soft cap Veil of Shadow um, at some point. Probably like while you're going like up to 50 mastery points here, you should like every now and then put some points here into Veil of Shadow. Um, but yeah, you can see also like what are the flat values that you gain here like 6 for 1.9 uh, for 2, 12 for 3. So you get like and you get like 4 for 4 points actually, like from 3 to 4, you get 4 asset here. Um, but also like conversion is like pretty high early on, like 5%, 5%, 5%, then you get 4%, 4%, 4%, 3%. So you have like diminishing returns the more points you put here. I mean, that's uh, that's okay to like have, for example, 4 out of 8 or like 5, something like this, right? If you have like plus 1 all skills later on, you should just put up 1 point here, I guess, and that should be fine. Um, yeah. Kind of the same for Merciless Repertoire until like very, very later on where you really want to like soft cap or hard cap this. But before doing that stuff, you should like go over to another mastery. Now, for Acid, you have basically two options, right? Uh, one being Oathkeeper and the other one being Actual Test, right? Now, I can cover both of those shortly. Uh, Actual Test, basically, the things that you want to take are. There's a frailty and vulnerability that you want to max this out, at least soft cap it. This is your poison resistance reduction. Uh, this is just for well, movement speed reduction and for the area effect effect, right? So you can like keep it at one point or put some more points here to have like more radius and longer duration here. Something like f I like something like three or four points usually later on. Um, another very important skill is Blood of Drig, right? You want this maxed out. And then you also, since you're like a dual wield character, right? And dual wield characters scale in state aware with attack speed, you also want Solar Switchfire soft capped. And then later on, you put like one point here or more, depending on how much vitality to acid conversion you have or like how much vitality resistance you're lacking. But like one point should always be worth it. And then, aspect of the Guardian, you pretty much always want this at least soft capped. Maybe even some more points now that this also gives you like 1% physical resistance for every two overcap points. Um, but yeah, insanely good spell as you can see. And well, then you want to get your possession as well. This one does give you like flat chaos damage just as well as this one does. Um, so you can already see that a build going for Arcule Test would benefit from chaos to acid conversion greatly. Um, but yeah, other than that, this also gives you chaos resistance and well. Poison and acid damage. Also, if you're like a witch hunter, which is not bad in a test, then this is the only exclusive skill you can use, so you kind of have to get it. Uh, the other option would be Dervish, right? So, not played an Oathkeeper. And now, for Dervish, you want to push for like five points first, and then you get RF. You can just max this out and get the transmitter here. Now, this will convert all the physical damage from the spell itself, but also like from weapon damage, so like whenever you have like a weapon that has a physical base, this will convert that physical damage to acid damage. And this makes Righteous Fervor a super super strong um, default attack replacer for like any acid, acid knight blade. Uh, also you want to get like one pointers into smite and presence of virtue, this is like another weapon pool skill, just the same as these, um, but also pretty nice. Um, just like be careful that you never ever get over 100% chance. Like this one is 20, this is 20, 8, 8, 8. So currently we are at, well, 64, right? But you can like max this out to 20, 20, and then you can have this to 20 as well. 20, 20, 20, 20. We have 100% that plus good. That's okay, that's great. But if you put more than, like if you go higher than 100%, because you can put this up to 29, then like the chances will be like um they will be scaled down right so your chance of execution will be actually lower than 20 percent and you don't ever want that to happen so if you want to have this at 25 which might be reasonable on some builds make sure to have like some of these either at like value below 5 20 percent or just delete, delete them at all right 
you don't need them anymore. Uh, say your build, I don't know, like supports Brick Cart and Whirling Death, and then you also want Execution Always, and then you want Smite, and uh, it would look like those, right? For example. Um, anyways, what else do you want here in Offkeeper? Like, while leveling, you should probably just do a one pointer here and then max it out later, or like put it up to 20 25% later, which is like 9 out of 10, right? Um, so you wanna just push here, uh, get like a one pointer in Presence of Virtue. It's just like a, a nice aura, you toggle it once and then it's active. Like a once, yeah, yeah, like you use it and then you forget about it, right? Resilience is a very nice uh, circuit breaker. Activates at 66% HP. And yeah, just gives you a bunch of resistances during that duration. Five seconds here. Uh, one pointer while leveling is enough, I guess, but like later on and like later leveling stages and the end game, you either put this at 5 or 11, those are like the sweet spots. So yeah, say 5 here, and then um, you push to 15, like at 1 here, we're leveling, push to 15, get like a 1 pointer into Haven, um, you can get up to 3 points if you're lacking HP, like the first 3 points give you 3% HP, which is like a pretty good value, it's similar to the Shaman's Heart of the Wild, right? But after that, you get like 2%, 2%, so 5 out of 10 is also kind of a sweet spot, but it's not that good anymore. And after that, you only get like 1% per point, so if you're not using a shield, Haven is only worth it up to like 3 out of 10, or maybe 5 out of 10. Um, putting more, more points than 5 is... Well, you don't really want to do it unless your character is like really low in HP. So let's put 3 here, and then Consecration... Um, you want this for pretty much everything, right? You want this for increased armor, you want this for elemental resistance, attack speed, DA. You can use everything here. So this is a great spell, or like great uh, buff that activates whenever you use RF, right? Um, what, is like the sweet, what are like the sweet spots here? Well, 1 is really good, 2 is really good, 3 is okay, 4 is okay, 5 is... Well, you can see 5 doesn't give you attack speed here, but... Um, so while leveling, I, should, I would probably leave it at 4. But later on, you should probably, like, just max it out, actually. Or, like, try to put it to 13. As you can see, like, the 13th level here would give me 13% attack speed. So 13 out of 12 would be, like, a nice sweet spot to be at as well. Um, but yeah, let's put it to 4 for now. And let's... Yeah, you can also use Wire Smite if you want, like, another movement ability. And then you just push here, and you can get Tectonic Shift to get like more range on your Fire Smite if you want to use that. Um, you can get Retribution for like some poison damage. Like the internal trauma here will be poison, but since we're like a fast attacking uh, build usually, the poison's not that like important. You care more about the flat acid than you care about the poison, right? Also, you can use like one pointer in Rebuke here. Like some flat physical damage, which will get converted to acid, right? And also you have, well, some reflection damage reduction, which is also kind of nice. Um, now you just want to push all the way to 50 now, because the Guardian here is only going to be useful for you once you can use Celestial Presence. Um, but before you use that, you should probably get Path of 3 first, right? This one, this will get, like, be flat poison damage. Percent acid, percent poison. Basically, you are well, exclusive cho uh, exclusive ex exclusive skill of choice. <clears throat> whenever you wanna go for an, like an acid build, right? And uh, you can also see here that level thirteen would give you another one percent CDR. So thirteen would be like a nice sweet spot, for example. Th like the sweet spots for Path of Three are basically the same as for Star Pact, which are like all those like point values that give you another. 1% CDR on top, because CDR is like, honestly, the most important thing here. Even for like a dual wield uh, Nightblade, to be honest. Like, CDR is just so good in, in general, in, the, in this game. Anyways, after you max out this, you get like one point in Summon of the Guardian, and max out Celestial Presence, and get the transmitter. Like, you should get the transmitter, obviously, right away, right? Like, once you use this, you get the transmitter, and then you get Celestial Presence here to reduce enemy poison and acid resistance on top. And then, last but not least, you should also get Ascension. Get at least one point of the Clarity of Purpose, and uh, like just hard cap Ascension, and put some remaining points here. Presence of Virtue. 
should like have the soft cap later, maybe some points here, just to five at least, right? Um, but like all of those will be available for you later when you have like more plus one or scans, right? Also, can, you can use Blade Barrier for like a, a panic button, right? All right. Um, when it comes to acid devotions, acid devotions are uh, like a little bit similar to cold ones, but then again, not really that much. Like you have the rumor, right? The rumor is like the most most important thing. Let's turn on the. Let's make it so that's more intuitive for you guys. All right. So you start off with with green here. Now, um, you want murmur, right? Green, murmur needs six green, six blue, three red. Uh, how do you get there? You take the scorpion. Scorpion is like a really good um, acid devotion. You can bind those to, I don't know, like RF if you're a dervish, or like you use it to ABB or Shadow Strike if you're like a witch hunter. And you can also use it to Ring of Steel, but Ring of Steel has like more cooldowns, so you kind of want it on either ABB or Shadow Strike usually. And um, yeah, it's pretty nice and um, also reduces enemy DA. So you don't even need to use the judgment crushing verdict, right? Really nice, really nice. Then next on you would like to get five blues, which means you either get Elo Sider's Guide. I would personally prefer Sider's Guide early on more. Because it's like generally like a better devotion. Um but later on Eel might be better because Eel does have like this dodge synergy and also Eel needs like one less point. Um, so this one point might make you able to well, get some devotions like u gold and uh, A-Bomb at the same time, right? Um, also, we want some reds, right? Now for reds, since they're like a dual with Nightblade, I can always suggest to get Ghoul. Ghoul is just really, really good overall. Um, you should put this to like Veil of Shadow. And then you get the Murmur, right? Murmur devotion, which has the sweet uh, acid resistance reduction, like poison and acid resistance reduction. And after this, you kind of want to make your way to Abomination, and probably also you go. Um, you can check like my endgame grunt, like endgame devotions, or like probably almost all asset dervishes with my MRS's shield burst character, which would look kind of like this. So you go for. Yeah, you have the spider, you have the stuff, the stuff, a bomb, you go revenant, jackal, etc. You can take a like, closer look at this, like in the link below. And if you want to level a cold night blade, then we start again at our like level twenty night blade here, twenty ish night blade. And what you want to do here is, well, you don't really care that much about these, but you can let like one point here, like it's fine, right? And then you push here, one point here, one point in ring of steel. Um, you push further, and you get like one point into Burning Death, you get a one point into Ring of Frost here, that converts the piercing from Ring of Steel to Code, and also freezes enemies instead of stunning them, which is just straight up better, as far as I know. And you get like a one point into Red Barrier, if you would like to have a... That's always optional, if you would like to have a circuit, like a, a panic button, rather. Uh, you get like a one pointer here, right? And then you get like a one pointer into Merciless Repertoire, you probably never max this out on a cold build, but it does give you some nice like cold percent, and maybe you have some asset to cold conversion, which would convert your poison to frostburn as well. And then you like if you have like full poison asset to cold conversion, you might like it might be worth it to max it out later on. But usually just a one pointer. And then you have elemental awakening, which honestly you can put some more points into when you're like a cold build, right? Um, like if you focus only on cold and like do fast attacking, dual wield attack speed stuff, and it's probably not worth it to put more than one point here unless you like need more elemental resistance, right? But if you want to like play a little bit more in the frost burn side, right, more like damage over time oriented, then it's definitely worth it to max this out. Like this one has some pretty decent frost burn damage, which will be like which will be applied to um like all your weapon damage. Spells like Ring of Steel or like MRS's Blade Burst and like your WPS as well, like your weapon pull skills, right? Um, but yeah, whatever thing you put like one point here or like as many as you would like to have for your elemental resistance, right? 
And then you just push further here, get like a one point in the circle slaughter, and again get five points of the execution here. So far, this is pretty similar to like pretty much everything else, uh, kind of similar to Pierce and Poison, right? Um, except for that, you can like put more points here, and you can also like put a point into the Nightfall here. Um, also, you should probably put a point in the Dallas here, even if you're a cold build. Um, yeah, like this, kind of. And if you want to like play a Frostburn, you put like more points in the Nightfall, right? Um, but. Yeah, also you soft have Void of Shadow as always, and put like Pneumatic Burst to like 6 out of 12, or like even 10 later, and... Uh, for secondary classes though, you can go for well, a number of options, right? You can go for Arcanist, you can go for Inquisitor, you can go for Shaman if you play like Cobra, but that's a very, very, very specific case, I'm probably not gonna... Like... Talk more about it, except for like mentioning it shortly here, you just like get Savagery, right? And this and this guy gonna be your default attack replacer, and get like all the other stuff like windows, raging tempest, and so on and so on, right? Kind of like this, but this only works if you have Corpus Hood, which converts like the lightning damage on savagery to cold. Otherwise, it's not gonna be that good. Otherwise, you should go for either an Arcanist, which has like some speed sweet spots here and there, right? Like Arcanist is pretty good overall now. Um, you can even like freeze enemies if you'd like to have that. But this doesn't really work on most bosses, bosses, so it's not that great. Um, but you do want to like first get everything like one pointed, and then later on you rush for Star Pack, basically. Now this is always pretty good for energy, right? This is always pretty good for racial damage to Aetherius and Chthonians. This is like a super good lens for your own debuffs or like enemy buffs. This is like a nice one pointer, like another like kind of circuit breaker, but it's more like a it makes you more beefy and deal more damage kind of circuit breaker. So it's not really that great, but it's like a good one pointer. Uh, inner focus, you should probably soft cap this later. There is not really any reason to hard cap or like put more points on twelve here anymore because of overload, and overload is now really really good. Like, you should always have the soft cap, gives you an insane amount of flat OA and also percent aether resistance. Uh, you also want to, like, soft cap elemental balance. You should probably never over cap this, but 12 out of 12 is really good, 25% crit damage. And also some, yeah, frost burn, etc. Uh, Maven Sphere, you want this as high as possible, always, on pretty much any build now, because you have no more penalty. And conversion has sweet spots at, well, 2. But that's kind of maybe only interesting while leveling. But later on, you want to have this at either 6 or at 9. So, like a sweet spot, as you can tell, like up to 6, you get like 3% CC resistance. And then 7 and 8 give you like 2% each. So, yeah, 6 is a pretty nice point, or like 9, also okay. You need like even more CC resistance. Um, you can also, if you have some other like uh, free points to use, you can also put more points in the Fabric of Reality now, especially if when you have like Aether or Chaos to Cold conversion. Um, those are not really that common, but if you have some, you can put more points here to also get more racial damage towards Chthonians and Aetherians. Most of the time though, this will probably just be a one-pointer and like get whatever you plus skills you have, right? That's fine like that. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, like you can use Offense like Alexa's Flash Freeze here, if you would like to use that. You can use Kader's Tempest to like proc stuff like Aeon's Hourglass if you for some reason want to go for that. I mean, it's a pretty good devotion, you can always consider it. I would probably not necessarily go for it on like a cold dual beard night blade, but it's pretty okay. Now, another secondary for cold night blades would be Inquisitor. Inquisitor is really great, like the Wind Infiltrator is one of the best uh, cold. Night Blaze as well. Kind of similar here, as for the Pierce build, you first of all just one point all those stuff, right? And you basically rush for Order of Sender here in this case, instead of Conviction. And max this one out. This one gives you the resistance reduction and reduces enemy damage as well. Really good spell here, and after this you also get the Inquisitor Seal, max out both of these if possible. And then like later after that, soft cap, deadly aim, hard cap. Well, of Renewal, get some points of the Vigor if you need more HP, get more points of the Seal Resolve if you need resistance cells against Aether and Chaos. 
You don't need Word of Pain here. Can, if you want to, use uh, the Rune of Hagarad and Biting Cold. Um, even if you're not playing a rune build, because of the way that Biting Cold works, right? This has flat the aid reduction, so you can just like probably like 1, 12, 1 would be pretty nice to have like more projectiles to like hit more enemies. You don't really need to use this though, and like just get Biting Cold to like reduce enemy DA and basically give yourself more effective OA and get better crits because of that. Yeah, Inquisitor is like, mm, yeah, pretty easy to understand. Like, like it's easier than Arcanist, I would say. And um, then also we have the Soldier. Mm, I've seen some like cold Blade Masters actually with say Deathmarked, for example. Um, and you can use that. You can also like, I believe there are some items that convert Cadence to cold damage, so you can have like Cadence as your. Uh, main ability, right? And um, there are some like Soldier has pretty nice defensive passives like uh, military conditioning, right? Giving more, more HP and physique. Um, decorated Soldier, really good. Slow resistance, element resistance. Scars of Battle, really good. Stun resistance, bleeding resistance, freeze, and armor absorption. And also Field Command, OADA, Squad Tactics, more attack speed. Really great, and then you also have like another movement ability if you want to use that one as well, um, or you have more uh, weapon pool skills. Zol hands is kind of terrible as far as I know when it comes to dual wielding, but Markovians is really good, um, like okay, and it also reduces enemy DA, so kind of similar to the Rune of Agarat from Inquisitor. And uh, also another thing that you should always try to fit when you're playing a soldier is war cry, right? You should. Always, always have this as add like a soft cap, right? Even if you're playing, like whatever ability you're playing, you're playing a soldier, and you don't have another source of reducing enemy targets damage, um, and you probably don't have any source that does the same thing as war crime, but even better. This is one can like this one reduces enemy damage by twenty five percent, and that's a really really high value already. I believe this is like one of the highest, if not the highest, values actually. Um, at least when it comes to all damage in one spell. So yeah, really good. And yeah, get like a one pointer in break morale just to like disrupt enemies, uh, enemy spell casting, right? Um, yeah, I would say like Soldier is pretty defensive for cold and not my favorite. Like Infiltrator and Arcanist def are definitely better. And both of those are also have pretty nice defensive capabilities like Inquisitor has the seal and also damage reduction on the Aura of Sanger. And Arcanist has elemental damage reduction here, uh, percent absorption here, and um, yeah, like another panic button in the form of Mirror of Iriocktes, right? Now, when it comes to the cold devotions, um, the devotion that you definitely want to get on a cold build is Rumor. So, the Murmur, Mistress of Rumors, right? And this one needs, again, six yellows, six blues, and three reds, right? So, I um, mean, first off, I would probably suggest you to either get Tsunami or Sailor's Guide. Sailor's Guide being like the more defensive, overall good choice. Um, but if you would like to have like a tier 1 devotion with damage early on, then you can also go for the Tsunami and take this one first. Um, tsunami is like a decent skill early on, it also got buffed like several patches ago. Um, but it's Still, like, not ideal in the end game, and you probably use something like Eel or Sailor's Guide over Tsunami in the end game. Um, but early on, it's fine. Like, if you don't like the movement speed here and the resistances for some reason, then you can still go for like Tsunami early on. Like, it will probably speed up your early game clear a little bit. And um, yeah, then for Reds, I always suggest you on like on any Might Blade to get the Ghoul, right? And for the greens, you should actually go for the spider now. Um, the spider is like the best way to get like six greens early on now. I mean, if you're an acid bird, right, you can just go for the scorpion sting, but as a cold, this doesn't really do that much for you. So, yeah, the spider is the better choice here, in my opinion. And then you can pull like one point from the red and one from the green again. And yeah, now you can use the murmur. And that's like the most important tier 2, or like overall it's like the most important devotion for a cold build actually. 
and yeah, you always have to attack this. Now after Murmur, you can either go for like an Amethyst Storm, or for Revenant, or just take Amatok. Um, all three are pretty nice. Um, I would probably go for like Raise the Dead and like Revenant overall on like any attack speed, default attacker, Code Nightblade now over um, the Elemental Storm. Like the, the proc itself is better on Elemental Storm, right? You have 32 Elemental Reduction compared to 28, no, 25 actually, um, Resistance Reduction. And also you have some Elemental Damage on this one while the Skeletons steal like Vitality and Aether Damage. But the nodes here are like really good, like you have Attack Speed and Love Steal, which is like insanely good for Dual Wielder, while this just gives you like some flat Elemental right? It's not that great. It's like okay, but this is like way way better. So yeah, after that you probably want to... Um, like you could get Amatok next, for example, as like a solid tier 2 proc as well, that you can always like use in like most cold builds. And you should try to fit this like almost always. Um, but yeah, when it comes to tier 3 devotions, you have like different um, options now, right? You can go for Dying God, Korvac, um Ultos, right? You can try to get all three or like two out of those three. Um, or you could try to go for the like heavy purple build, which uh, like aim for Leviathan. And so probably if I would go for like Leviathan, I would probably also take uh, Elemental Storm over the Revenant, right? Because, yeah, like, um, the Revenant is really, really good when you have, like, when you want to go for Dying Gods, for example, because Dying God needs 8 reds as well, and Revenant does so too. And also Ultos needs 6, right? So, like, Ultos, Revenant, Dying God, they fit together very well, while Leviathan doesn't really fit that well with those. It fits better with, like, Rowan's Crown, for example. And, um... Yeah, since this route like gives you more life steal and more attack speed, I would actually like on a dual wield attacker, dual field attacker, I would probably also like always go for like Revenant, Dying God, and Ultos over Leviathan. Leviathan is more for like cold casters in my opinion. I mean it's not it's not bad for default attackers either, because you get also some physical resistance and some like flat cold, flat frostburn here. But overall, like it cannot beat um like Dying God or Ultos, right? Like, this is more for casters, usually. So, yeah, like, I would probably just go for, like, Jackal next, right, and get Revenant here. And, uh, yeah, try to aim for the Dying God, right? So you get, like, also aim for Ultos, actually. Um, so you could also, actually, like, after you have Revenant, you could also aim for Bat, right? And then you take, take out the Jackal again. Um, get some blues, right? Um, you can get like an eel really quick, get the watcher, and then after the watcher, you can like either retrieve the eel or just keep it to get dying god as well. And right? then you could get dying god, as you can see here, and at the same time also aim for the ultos. And you can get this proc easily, for example, if you switch out uh, the tsunami, right? I mean, you have to like, retrieve these first. And then you take the Sailor's Guide, right? And you'd retrieve the uh, Tsunami here. That's why I also said, like, Tsunami is not that good later on, because, well, it needs, like, one point more than, say, Sailor's Guide, right? Um, in this case, allowing you to get the proc or the Hand of Ultos. Um, you could also, like, take out one more green, right? You could use um, Scholar's Light and the green crossroads here instead of the spider. Um, and then you could also get this load over here, the chaos and the resistance and the HP. But, um, I mean, since Spider also gives you attack speed now, you would lose attack speed if you don't have Spider, and right? So, which one is better, which one is not? Well, it kind of depends. Um, you could also, like, try to get these three and then take out this point and, like, like reduce your greens even more. Um, that's sometimes worth it. Um, you can... Like, you will see different layouts here, um, and, like, the different Groom Tools links that I will show you, or that are, like, in the description of this video, right? You will see some builds go for, like, Ultos, Dying God, some go for, like, um, Korvac, Dying God, or, like, some go for Korvac and Ultos, some go for Leviathan, maybe, 
Um, some not use bad, some will use bad, so there will be some variants here. Now, one of the main reasons why it said that, like, up to level 20, it definitely doesn't really matter which type of damage you go for, because, like, all of this will look the same. Um, like, one of the reasons for that is that at level 20, you can actually, like, no matter which weapons you have here, right, you can um, start using some really strong buffs or, like, components that give you, like, auras that apply damage. I give you flat damage, so you can use, for example, cold stone if you're like a cold bot. As you can see, like requires level 20, so you can use this at level 20. And once you're level 20, you should definitely just craft two of them if you want to, for example, do a cold bot and apply two of them. Um, remember that you have to also activate the auras, so put like the auras on your second skill bar, um, activate them, and keep them activated to have like an insane amount of flat and percent damage on top. This will boost your damage by a ton, so like once you are level 20 as a Nightblade, um, your damage will start to pop, up, pop off, and um, yeah, like if you're playing Acid, for example, you can do the same with uh, Vitriolic Gallstones, right? And these ones here, they're basically the same, but like for Acid instead of for Cold, so if you go like for Acid, you can use like double of these, and for Pierce, you also have these serrated spikes, which you can actually, like these are a little bit different, they are a little bit weaker, they're also not a craft, they are um, just a, a component that you find. You can uh, use this from like level 7 on, so you can use these earlier, but they're a little bit weaker. As you see, they give you less pierce damage than, say, the cold stone or vitriolic gives you cold or um, acid damage, right? So for pierce build, um, I mean, you can use like some of these, but they're gonna fall off rather soon. And what you can always do on like any kind of night blade is you can always use like an imbued silver to like fix your bleed and chaos resistance and also like get more damage to Chthonians. And you can also use a purified salt, which like does basically the same but for aether. Right? Gives you aether resistance and like more damage to ethereals. Note that these two abilities are again auras that you have to like put on your secondary bar and then activate for them to be active. Um these also, this one requires level 20, this one level 15. Um, but yeah, yeah, usually like around level 20, you should start using these other cold stones, vitriolic gas stones, imbued silver, purified salt, and well, maybe serrated spikes. But for Pierce, I would just go for like the defensive ones like silver and salt. Because they're just like really good. Um, actually, there's one other component you can use for Pierce, which is just like basically a better version of serrated spike. It is the Vicious Spikes, as you can see here. And this one is more similar to Cold Stone and Virtuola Gas Stone in terms of power level. It's still like a little bit worse, but not that much anymore. Like you can see only like having one less flat damage here and the same amount of flat damage here. And these also require level 15. So yeah, around 20, like sometimes at level 15, if you're playing a Pierce, but you should check out these Vicious Spikes here. And once you're level 20, you should check out Cold Stones, um, Vitriolic Gas Stones, Purified Salt, and Imbued Silver for your weapons. Now, when it comes to armor components, um, there are some very good ones that you can use like from level, say, 15, 20, 30 on, up to level 94. And even in the endgame, if you like, don't have the blueprints for the like really good ones from AOM, um, or, for example, anti venom solve on belt, boots, gloves, or pants. Um, mostly for like belts and boots, though. For boots, you also have Mark of the Traveler. If you're like really slow and you would like to have more movement speed, you can also use a Mark of the Traveler on your boots. For the gloves, you have the anti venom solve again. Um, you have mutated scales for more HP. You have restless remains for the lifesteal and casting speed and energy. And also you would have consecrated wrappings for more attack speed. Another really good component that you can use on shoulders and your pants are is the silk swatch. This is like usually I take like two of these, right? Um, really good to fix pierce and bleeding resistance, especially the pierce is really important here. When it comes to the rings, um, most of the time you want to fix your right hater resistance via the rings, and then you can use like a soul shard 
Um, if you have like very good whitehead resistance or like decent whitehead resistance, you can check out Corpse Dust. This gives you less whitehead resistance but also more HP. And also, if you don't even need any of those whitehead resistance uh, components, you can also use the Mark of Illusions, which gives you like nice elemental damage, spirit, and DA. So this one is especially good when you're playing like a cold Nightblade. Also, you can use the Frozen Heart for some flat HP, cold resistance, and reduced freeze and petrify duration. When it comes to the components for the metal and amulet, you can have the Vault Stone for elemental resistance, bleeding resistance, and movement speed. You can again also have the Soul Shard for white healthy resistance, and you can also craft the Aether Soul, which you wouldn't have to like get the blueprint with first, but you will buy that, and or yeah, you can buy that from the Devil's Crossing um, faction vendor. And this is like pretty nice against Aether damage, and then the same basically for Chaos is the Black Tallow, and you can buy these in Act 3 from Kami's Chosen and Order of the Death's Vigil. Now for your chest you can use like pretty much all of those that I already mentioned, or like most of those that I already mentioned. And on top of that there's the Sanctified Bone, which you can craft and find, and this one's really really good as well. And also there is the Chains of Oleron for like offensive ability if you want to have more offensive ability. And there's the Hollowed, hollowed Ground. Hollowed Ground, there we go. Um, for like defensive ability and elemental resistance. Now for your helmet, um, you either want to use Leathery Hide for like HP and sun duration. You want to use maybe another Sanctified Bone for vitality and chaos resistance. Or you want to use a rune stone for aether resistance and elemental resistance. Now, when it comes to the gear, like what gear do you want to look out for when you're leveling a nut blade? First of all, um, out of the level one items that you can get from like the different houses, there's this almond's axe, which is basically made for a night blade, right? This is especially perfect for a cold night blade, but early on, as I said before, like it doesn't really matter which damage type you go for, you just want to like have two weapons and for like level 1 or 2 at least, Omen's Axe is probably the best one that you can get here. Um, this will very certainly be like uh, outperformed by any like uh, yellow item that you find early on with like attack speed or flat damage on top of it. So usually you want to look out for swords, because swords have like the highest base attack speed. And if you have like a sword with like a suffix or prefix, this gives you another, like even more attack speed. Those are basically your best weapons that you can get early on. Uh, also another weapon to consider is the Sleft Tongue, especially if you're playing like a poison build. Um, you will find this in one of the caves in Act 1 as well, like one of the Sleft Caves. The one Sleft Cave that has the uh, shrine in it. It also have like a dead body that you can click on and then it will drop this slith tongue for you. Um, so yeah, just another like weapon that you can use on a night blade early on. Um, other than that, from Act 1, um, there's this Rift Scourge Slicer, which drops for like the, the small green insects, right? And that's pretty nice for like a poison night blade, but yeah, like early on it can be used by any night blade, it's pretty good. One of the better items that you can find, other than like yellow swords with like attack speed or green swords with attack speed. Right? Next up, in Act Two, as uh, swords for a, especially a cold night blade, like these spectral long swords. As you can see, they give you like cold damage, like pierce the cold conversion to shadow strike, more like glass cooldown to shadow strike, uh, yeah, or more bonus to shadow strike, and some. Here's some cold damage, so they're like pretty nice, but they don't have attack speed, so they're actually not that great for, say, a default dual build attacker. Um, so unless you find like a one of these with like a attack speed prefix or suffix on top, uh, chances are you're not gonna use this because well, you might have better options in Act Three will have the Dermaptarian Slicers, which will basically be your best option for Pierce build until like very later on, until you get like some legendaries that have a good Pierce base or like good armor piercing. So if you get like, say, 
superior of alacrity, which is like bonus physical damage and bonus alacri like attack speed, right? Or puncturing of alacrity, which is like bonus pierce damage and attack speed. Those are like what you want to look for. Right? And also like vampiric of alacrity, which gives you like life steal and attack speed is also really really strong here for pierce night blades. Um, next up we have the Malkadar's Dreadblade, which is also like you get this on like early Act Four, down in the Tomb of the Archon. If but only if you have been like if you chose Kaiman's Chosen, and since this is a cold weapon, I would suggest you that whatever you want to like build a cold night blade, you should probably side with Kaiman's, um, just because then you can kill Malkadar, and by killing Malkadar will get like his red blade and this is really really strong for like any cold night blade. This can also be used late game on infiltrator and trickster builds as the weapon damage to execution is like really really strong. When you're playing a acid dervish for example there's a mace that will drop like um, short before the vanguard of the um, of the three, right? There's like a scorpion boss called Ganar Vakar, and you should kill him for like his thing. Um, this is obviously awesome for acid dervishes, as you can tell. Huge acid damage to like another. Like, uh, it's not huge acid damage, but it's it's some acid damage, right? Added to RF and like yes, plus two to RF, plus two to lethal assault. So this is great, and if you roll like this with again. Electricity, attack speed, vampiric, love steal, or like um, corrosive, right? Like anything which like has acid damage or life steal or attack speed is great again. On Mord Sword, or like a dagger actually, um, which you cannot farm in normal, you will only have to, like, you will only be able to get it in elite and higher. This is called the Locksmere's Frostblade. Which will drop from a actually not that easy boss in Planes of Strife. He only spawns there in Elite and Ultimate. He has like one spawn point and he doesn't spawn all the time. Um, but yeah, be a little bit careful about this guy. If you feel comfortable enough to like kill a boss that can, well, <laughs> trap you, nullify you, and Shadow Strike on you, and potentially one shot you if you're like caught off guard by having no buffs because he nullified you. Um, if you're comfortable enough facing that guy, then do it, and you can farm his first bait here. Also really nice uh, Shadow Strike item, even better than the uh, Specter Long Swords that I showed you before. I mean, if you're, say, a Spellbreaker, it's kind of easy to kill him, right? You, you get nullified and you just pop your mirror after that, and yeah, you just kill him. But there's like one that I actually forgot, which is like the best out of all. Uh, especially for cold builds at least, there's a chill strife dagger, the Oyenborg chill strife. Whenever you're playing a chill, like a, a cold light blade, you can always go for this one. Say you have no luck with Mycadar dread blades, you have no luck with Spectral Long Swords or with um, Dox Mirror's daggers, right? Don't worry, the chill strife that you get in Act 5 is most of the time better than all of the former ones, anyways. So, yeah, this one gives you like more resistance reduction to Weight of Shadow. Has a flat cold base, so you don't need to like convert physical to cold or something like that. And has aether resistance. And if you roll like alacrity, like attack speed, love steal, and cold damage on this again, then it's perfect. Now, what are other like items out there that you could like look out for? Um, usually, there are like blue sets, right, that are like kind of easier to get than uh, legendary sets or some of the MIs of like crazy FXs, right? And if you go for Pierce slash a little bit of bleed, um like that set is mostly for Pierce, don't get me wrong. The Fist of the Blind Assassin or like the Unseeing Eye set, which is like a level 72 set, and then the mythical version of this, the Unseeing Gaze set, which consists of a mace, a razor, like a sword, and uh yeah, there we go, right, this one. And then you also have like a headpiece, I believe. Um, a chest. And a shoulder piece. No, 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 no shoulder piece, but like an amulet, right? Um, so it does look like a really nice 
do set as well that you can also like always keep your eyes op open for when you're like leveling and not played and you don't have like any gear from because you're like either it's like your first character or you just simply don't have that much items yeah take a look at um if like blind assassin set it's really good i also check out say willie's razor this is also like a really good like blue um sword you can get early on especially the empowered one as this one also gives you plus one night blade as you can see here really good really good uh, blue item here um or as said there's like another thing that you can also use that you get guaranteed from Iron Barons, right? The Manticore Longsword. This is a well, like quest item that you like a reward, like a reward item for a quest in Pine Barons. Pretty good for like an asset night blade. Good. I would probably use this over like on a witch hunter, maybe even over uh, the Gunner Vakar's thing because it has more attack speed than the Gunner Vakar. Also, you could use Wendigo's Barb for uh, acid witch blades. As this has also attack speed, blood of Drig, and Lelos. It also converts Pierce to Acid to Blood of Drig, which means that as long as you have Blood of Drig active, this will serve you as like global conversion. And if you have double like dual Wendigo barbs and you have like 90% Pierce to Acid conversion whenever you have Blood of Drig active, which should basically be all the time when you're playing a Witch Hunter, right? Now when it comes to rings, what you want to look out for, especially when you're playing an Acid Nightblade, are the Viroth rings. These are dropped from the Sliff boss down in the cellar. Boss here, and he's called Viroth, and he has a chance to drop his ring. And this one is really, really good for Acid Knight Blades as well. Another really nice MI for Acid Knight Blades while leveling is the Putrid Necklace that drops from Primordian, the Forgotten One, which is like a boss in, I believe, the Slith Cave. Uh, like the Slith Cave after the one Slith Cave that has the shrine in it, right? So the second one, which is like around the same area where you also find the Lost Caravan Driver. Now, on the other hand, an amulet that is very good for cold night blades is Elena's Necklace. You will find this down in the cellar on Hardgate's Isle. Um, this is like bound to a quest with Kasparov, so you can only enter this once you're like, I believe, honored with Devil's Crossing and once you've like done all the other quests with Kasparov he will give you this quest to like retrieve the uh, like some secret piece of paper from Hargate's laboratory, right? And uh, yeah, there's a boss called Elena, the first Slith and uh, yeah, she can drop this item it's really good for Code Night Bits and the lowest version is about 35, so you can also get this rather early, actually, and um, yeah, use it on your Cold Night Blade. Another amulet that can not only be used by Witch Hunters, but by any Night Blade, is the Empowered Essence of Baranoth. This one has flat elemental damage, percent elemental damage, so it's already really good for Cold Night Blades. But it also has attack speed, aether resistance, elemental resistance, and plus one all skills, which makes it also good for Pierce and Acid Night Blades. Also, some of the elemental damage is probably being converted to acid or pierce by some of your gear at least in the end game and another reason why this is really nice and easy to get is because you can actually buy the blueprint here you see the blueprint and you can see you can buy it from Benevolt and the blood grove and from vinoton and the ferret thicket um keep like note that these shops might not have like a 100% chance to sell this but just check them like over and over. The one in Bloodgrove is like really easy to go to. You have to like just go to the secret area in Bloodgrove where this guy is and then like farm him over and over until he will sell you this blueprint. And yeah, then you can just craft this import essence of Burnoth. It's really, really strong on almost any build while leveling, to be honest. Um, but especially strong on Night Blades. A metal that you can look out for is the Basilisk's Mark. This will convert your piercing damage to acid to ring of steel and also add more acid damage to your ring of steel. So whenever you're playing an acid, either witch hunter or dervish, uh, check out the basilisk mark and make sure to get one of these in Act 5. Pretty nice, pretty easy to get. Another blue set that I would like to mention to you here is the Perdition set. 
There's like a level 40 version of this, a level 65 version, and a level 94 version. Um, keep in mind that this does have a shield as well. So, um, yeah, if you're like a dervish, you can actually play with a shield if you would like to, because this also gives you like plus two to all skills and Oathkeeper. Um, I think on the, like even on the level 40 version even. Um, but you're probably not gonna find all five pieces while leveling anyways. But just using like some of these pieces are like really strong on any witch hunter or dervish as well. Just keep in mind that handguards, like tradition is really strong. It's a really strong set. Another blue set I also want to show you is the Silver Sentinel set. Um, you have the Silver Guardian and the Silver Sentinel. One of them being the level 65 version, the other one being the level 82 version. Now this is really really good and really easy to find for like any cold night blade. Um, it's kind of usable for pierce as well, but the blind assassin will be way way better than this for pierce. Um, yeah, it consists of like a hood which converts pierce to cold also, so yeah, not really usable for pierce. Never mind that, just use it for cold. Um, same for this one, right, the mythic one. Uh, you have like shoulder guards also converting acid to cold, so also not really usable for acid, but even better for cold. And yeah, and the chest guard here as well. And you can find like 5% physical resistance rolls on these, so these can be really good actually. And also be usable in the end game, especially when you're playing an infiltrator and you want to use like Rune of Agarad on top of like your usual Nightblade skills. Now when it comes to the, the relic, like early on you should probably just use the Bone Talisman. Like you get this from like a one of the earlier quests in Act 2 where you're like supposed to retrieve a relic from uh, a lost rover, right? And you can just choose to keep this relic, like to lie about getting the relic and, uh, and you will well, keep this bone talisman and it's a pretty nice relic early on, like especially when you're like uh, a new player and you don't have any relics yet. Uh, and also this is probably just as good or like even stronger than any of the tier 1 relics anyways. Later on though, especially once you have the blueprint for slaughter, once you like hit level 35 you should craft the slaughter relic if you have it and use it on Basically any night blade. Uh, it's especially good for piercing night blades, but it's also really strong for cold and acid night blades. Later on, one of the go-to rakes for pierced night blades is probably the Belgothian's Carnage. Uh, not only probably, it is one of the go-to relics for <laughs> pierced uh, night blades. This requires you level like it requires level 70, and importantly, it requires you to find its blueprint right here, and this will be harder to find on just getting level 70 usually. Now when you're leveling a dervish especially, uh, the meditation relic is really really strong. Um, you can use this from level 60 on, um, but again this is a legendary relic so if you're like a new player you probably won't be able to craft this at level 60. But if you have like a nice blueprint collection already, feel free to craft the meditation at level 60 when you're a dervish. It gives you like plus one oathkeeper and lots of percent acid, DA total speed, right, and also has this active which gives you like even more flat acid damage, really really strong. Another good relic for acid night blades is the death stalker relic. This one is a level 90 relic though and also you need to, you can only find this from killing the death stalker in the ancient grove in ultimate, but so this is kinda hard to get, but just keep this in mind. Also a very strong relic if you're like not a dervish at least is the Nidalas outbreak for witch hunters and say even poison reapers. It's really really, really nice. Um, yeah, just look at this. That's like really strong. When it comes to cold relics for cold night blades. The first legendary relic you usually can use and it's really strong is the Nemesis relic. That gives you plus one night blade, cold damage, and also it's like a nice pet kitty as well, which deals some cold damage, etc. Um, so yeah, requires level 60 and also requires you to find the blueprint, of course. Um, really strong if you have it. Once you're like level 60 and you're leveling a cold, a cold night blade, you should use this if you have it. Later on, uh, if you're playing a cold night blade, um, Nidala's outbreak might be stronger usually than Nemesis actually. Um, but Nemesis can still be very, very strong later on as well, and sometimes even outperform Nidala's outbreak. One special. Um, Cold Night Blade Relic would be the Iskandra's Balance, but this one is only... I would only recommend this when you're playing like a Spellbreaker. Otherwise I would, I would not use this. Same applies to the Eternity Relic, also really strong, def a little bit more defensive um, relic for Arcanists. So 
Again, you can use this if you're in Spellbreaker, otherwise I would not. And last but not least, you can always go for the Serenity Relic later on. Um, just always a solid choice for any character. Now, I know this is kind of becoming a longish video, like really long, but um, I just want to like show you off some endgame concepts at least, some endgame builds, like why would you level a dual wield Nightblade in the first place, run it towards where's like my endgame gonna be. Um, check out these builds that I'm gonna show you here like real quick, that's gonna be like a sh very short, well, <laughs> more like a spotlight, nothing more, and uh, more like a sneak peek, and uh, you will find the um, corresponding builds to those like down in the, in the comments, and yeah, check out those links if you're like interested in real guides or like end game builds, because right now I don't really have like a proper dual with night play, like they all seem to somehow die in my hands and <laughs> I mean I'm not Raynan, I'm not like the the pilot god for Night Blades. But yeah, here we have the endgame setups. When it comes to the code infiltrator, you have plenty of endgame choices, like for example the Deathmark set, uh Rantong set with Nex and Orchards, even Bowmonger set, now this is a more modern, more creative design with chill hearts as well. Um also, the Silver Sentinel set is still a very solid blue set that you can also use. Or, well, ever since the Shattered Realm set uh, Forgotten Gods, you can also like just use the Shattered Realm set, right? This gave us new opportunities, new concepts like Shattered Realm set together with Chill Hearts, together with uh, Chill Drives from Agdenborg, or even also Next Dortus. Keep in mind that almost all of those Infiltrator builds can also be played with a Arcanist secondary. And also even with a demo secondary. And also with her is kind of a bad class for cold damage, but it's okay. On top of that, we also should not forget about Trickster. Trickster has Shaman as a secondary. And uh, together with the Corbus set, Corbus Hood, which converts like all of the lightning damage to savagery, cold, um, you have a top tier cold build as well in Tricksters. And when it comes to Acid Night Blades, basically before Forgotten Gold, we only had the Witch Hunter class, which as you could see here, was either played with a full Venom Blade set or with like a one piece Venom Blade with like double Death Guard Blades and a Death Guard Shroud. Um, now, since Forgotten Gods, the Dervish class is pretty much taken over. I mean, we can still play a Witch Hunter, but Dervish is most of the time just a better Witch Hunter, to be honest. Um, again, here you can see a full Venom Blade concept, one piece Venom Blade, some other new gear like Mythical Perdition, and so on. Um, there is also like a new set, the Dune Fiend set, which you can also play as a Dervish, but it's not that traditional dual wield playstyle, right? And it's also um, currently at least a little bit worse than Venom Blade. And then last but not least, also here, the introduction of the SR set um, gave us new opportunities. For example, using SR set together with double miseries. This is, I believe, one of the tankiest uh, asset Dervishes there is. And last but not least, we have the Pierce builds. Now, for Pierce damage, back in Vanilla, we pretty much only ever had these Demerterian Slicers, that you can see here on the right. And then ever since Ashes of Mammoth, we got the Bergothian set, which is like very widely used now for like any kind of Pierce build, like Pierce Blade Masters, Pierce Infiltrators. Um, that's pretty much it, though. I mean, Pierce is really strong, but there aren't that many builds. Um, you can see like another iteration of a Blade Master build here, um, actually an Infiltrator this time another Bergothian build, and um, there are some new concepts now with the SR set again. You can do like double reverse claw as you can see here on like an SR set. I even did like my own twist of this uh, recently as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is for like dual wield pierce usually. I mean, I would be lying if I said that Bergothian is actually the only build, like the only set that you can use for pierce. There is also the Dawn Assassin build. Blind Assassin set, which is very good as Renan has showed us all, right? So if you've made it this far in my video, thank you so so much for watching everything of this, like every last minute. This uh, was kind of a well bigger video to make for me this time. Um, took me a little bit more time than usual, but hopefully it's worth it and hopefully I've covered like all different uh, like playstyles and builds for at least dual build Nightblade. I will maybe probably do like another video focused a little bit more around Phantasmal Blades Night Blades because that's kind of a different playstyle but uh, that's gonna be in the future at some point. Um, 
but yeah, until then, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you so much for um, hopefully checking out my other videos as well. Feel free to like, comment uh, below if you have still some other questions or you just like want to say anything. You know, every kind of feedback is appreciated. Also, it's always great to see you guys in my stream. Like whenever there's someone in my stream saying hello, I'm here from YouTube. It's super awesome. Always brings a smile on my face. And yeah, I mean, if you haven't yet, also please subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And see you guys around on the next one.